over here this is the malignant hepatocyte now the first very important thing that i would like to highlight look at the cell plate look at the thickness of the cell plate look at the thickness it is more than three cell thick okay so the thickness is very high it is more than three cell thick so it is having one layer two layer three layer this is the fourth layer so you can see proliferating hepatocytes over here which is more than three cell thick okay there's a thickened hepato uh, hepatocyte trabeculae which is more than three cell layer thick this is the first important thing that you should see very importantly you can see certain glandular spaces okay these are glandular we call it as a false gland this is a pseudo asinal this is not a true gland it is actually representing dilated bile canalicula malformed dilated these are not the true gland these are malformed dilated bile canalicula so these are pseudo asinal arrangement okay and you can see all this is an, an, another say so this is a basic trabeculae and you can see this is one layer two layer three layer four around five layer one two three four five so there is five layer thick you know cell plate is there so this is very important so there is distortion of the normal architecture number one you are having large pseudo asinar space number three which is nothing but the dilated bile canalicula and number three you have thickened hepatocyte trabeculae microscopically there are three important features that you have to see there is a triad of large polygonal cells with granular cytoplasm that is oncocytic cytoplasm due to the presence of abundant mitochondria this is number one microscopic feature number two they have vesicular nucleus with prominent nucleoli and they have parallel lamellae of dense collagen bundles so i will show you all the three features over here so this over here what is this this is the num the collagen bundles that we see these uh, hepatocyte that you see they are having increased amount of eosinophilic cytoplasm that is the oncocytic oncocytic cytoplasm okay is there and very importantly if you see they have prominent nucleoli they have prominent nucleoli this is the classical triad that you will see okay nest and cause now coming to the very important uh, topic of today's discussion is the hepatocellular carcinoma called as the hcc this is a very very important exam question lots of mcqs are based from the hepatocellular carcinoma so hepatocellular carcinoma accounts for approximately 5.4 percent of all the cancers worldwide and it is the most common cancer in geographic regions where the incidence of hepatitis b infection is high so hep b is playing an important role especially if you see the x gene of the hbv okay we have read about the hbx the x gene of the hbv plays a very important role in the pathogenesis of uh, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma more than 85 percent of the cases occurs in uh, countries in asia like southeast china korea taiwan and sub-saharan africa where chronic hbv infection is common the peak incidence of hepatocellular carcinoma in these areas uh, is in young adults between 20 to 40 years of age who have acquired hepatitis b virus infection via the vertical transmission that is from mother to the fetus encouragingly the incidence of hepatocellular carcinoma is decreasing in asia because of hepatitis b vaccination but at the same time the incidence is increasing in the western countries owing to rising rates of hepatitis c infection and metabolic syndrome for unclear reasons the rate of hcc is more in case of males and the ratio is 8 is to 1 as compared to the females so it is eight times more prevalent in males as compared to the females Looking at the pathogenesis, most of the hepatocellular carcinomas occurs in the setting of chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. Okay, so there is some kind of cirrhosis, and most of the HCCs are occurring in the setting of cirrhosis. While 15 to 20 percent of hepatocellular carcinoma they arise in non-cirrhotic liver. The most common underlying uh, disease uh, which is underlying or, which, or, or in the setting of which HCC occur, number one is your chronic viral hepatitis. Remember, hepatitis B infection is more, uh, you know, implicated as compared to C. If you have to choose one option, it will be B. Then other metabolic diseases such as hereditary hemochromatosis or alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency as well as alcoholic liver disease. Other risk factors, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease also increases the risk of hepatocellular carcinoma even in the absence of cirrhosis. I told you, certain cases around 15-20% cases of hepatocellular carcinoma is occurring in non-cirrhotic livers. One such example is NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Now, it is believed that in all these above conditions that we see, that chronic injury, inflammation and hepatocyte regeneration that are seen in these disorders 
contribute to the acquisition of driver mutations that is leading to hepatocellular carcinoma development. So, in all these chronic disease, there is long-term chronic injury, inflammation, hepatocyte regeneration that is leading to the acquisition of the hallmarks of cancer leading to the development of hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, part of the risk in Africa and Asia also occurs because of contamination of the crops by a, a mycotoxin called as aflatoxin. Okay, now this is the mycotoxin which is produced by Aspergillus species that acts synergistically with alcohol and Hep B infection. The fifth important risk factor. Now, the risk for hepatocellular carcinoma in cirrhosis is related to other etiologies like Wilson's disease and chronic biliary disease is somewhat lower, but again, as compared to normal population, it is increased. So, these are other risk factors. Okay, now hepatocellular carcinoma is associated with a complementary set of certain driver mutations that leads to acquisition of cancer hallmarks. Now, among the most common are activating mutations in the beta catenin gene. 40% of the tumors, they are having activating mutations in the beta catenin gene. Mutations in the third gene, okay, that upregulates the telomerase activity is seen in another 50 to 60% of the tumor. And inactivating mutation of TP53 is seen in another 60% of the tumor. So, very importantly, if you see the most important risk factors, they are chronic viral hepatitis, hepatitis B more than C, metabolic disease such as hereditary hemochromatosis, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency, alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, then we are having uh, aflatoxins or certain mycotoxins, then we are having Wilson's disease, chronic biliary disease. So, all these are important risk factors and among the driver mutations, if you see most of the tumors, they contain activating point mutations in the beta catenin gene, number one, number two mutations in the third gene which is encoding telomerase and thirdly mutation in inactivating mutation in the tumor suppressor gene that is TP53. Now, one unusual histological subtype that often occurs in adolescents and young adults in the absence of pre-existing liver disease that is fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma is strongly associated with a fusion gene that leads to aberrant activity of protein kinase A, an enzyme that participates in signaling pathway regulated by CAM. Okay, so this is one very important subtype that we will also discuss today that is the fibrolamellar variety of hepatocellular carcinoma. This is strongly associated with the fusion gene that leads to aberrant activity of protein kinase. And remember, this variety of hepatocellular carcinoma is more common in adolescents and young adults. We will discuss this in the end of this video. Now, coming to the hepatocellular carcinoma, several precursor lesions have been described for hepatocellular carcinoma. In the, non, in the setting of non cirrhotic liver, hepatocellular carcinoma can arise from hepatocellular adenoma that we have already discussed. And among them, the most or the highest risk is with this beta catenin activating variety of hepatocellular adenoma. In chronic liver disease, the earliest morphological alterations that appear to correlate with the presence of at risk hepatocytes is called as large cell change and small cell change. So, these uh, so in the setting of cirrhosis, so this is under the uh, uh, this is basically non cirrhotic liver. So, in non cirrhotic liver, basically. Uh, it can arise from those hepatocellular adenoma wherein beta catenin activating mutation is there. But in case of liver which is cirrhotic in the setting of cirrhosis, okay, the earliest change are the large and small cell change. So, what is that? Large cell change refers to hepatocytes which are larger than normal and often have enlarged multiple pleomorphic nucleus without an increase in NC ratio, number one. In small cell change, the hepatocytes, they have a high NC ratio and they have mild nuclear hyperchromatia and or pleomorphism. So, in small cell change, cytological atypia is more pronounced, okay, as compared to large cell change. But both these changes in the setting of cirrhotic livers, they seem to, you know, be, uh, you know, precursor lesions of hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, apart from this large and small cell change, a more ominous nodular lesion seen in cirrhotic liver, which is a direct precursor of, uh, you know, Hepatocellular carcinoma is the presence of what is called as dysplastic nodules, which are often associated with small cell change. The dysplastic nodules are differing from adjacent cirrhotic nodules in size, color and vascularization showing varying degrees of dysplasia. And if you see, they are having molecular alterations or they have clonal alterations associated with full blown hepatocellular carcinoma. So, whatever uh, driver mutations, whatever molecular alterations that is seen in the full blown hepatocellular carcinoma that is also also seen in dysplastic nodule. Some areas of hepatocellular carcinoma may sometimes be seen in high grade dysplastic nodule. 
ओके एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ नॉड्यूल इन नॉड्यूल अपियरेंस सो समटाइम्स इन अ डिस्प्लास्टिक हाई ग्रेड डिस्प्लास्टिक नॉड्यूल यू माइट सी एन एरिया ऑफ हेपेटोसोरोलर कार्सोनोमा सो अ नॉड्यूल ऑफ कार्सोनोमा विद इन अ नॉन नॉड्यूल दैट इज कॉल्ड एज नॉड्यूल एंड नॉड्यूल अपियरेंस व्हिच इज क्लासिकली सीन इन हाई ग्रेड डिस्प्लास्टिक नॉड्यूल हेपेटोसोरोलर कार्सोनोमा दे मे फॉर्म अ सिंगल मास और दे मे फॉर्म मल्टीपल डिस्क्रीट मासेस और इट मे आल्सो डिफ्यूजली इन्फिल्ट्रेट द एंटायर लिवर सो इट माइट बी अ सिंगल लीजन मल्टीपल लीजन और द एंटायर लिवर माइट बी इन्फॉल्ड दे मे आल्सो बी पेल एंड येलो बिकॉज ऑफ फैटी चेंज और ग्रीन बिकॉज ऑफ कोलेस्टासिस बिकॉज ऑफ अंडरलाइन क्रॉनिक लिवर डिजीज द ट्यूमर लार्जर देन टू सेंटीमीटर्स आर लाइकली टू बी एसोसिएटेड विद वैस्कुलर इन्वेशन एंड इंट्राहेपैटिक मेटास्टेसिस इन्वेशन ऑफ द वेन्स विद एक्सटेंशन इन टू पोटल वेन इन्फीरियर वेना कावा एंड इवन द राइट साइड ऑफ द हार्ट मे ऑकर So this lesion, we can see a single lesion over here. This was the uh, liver obtained at autopsy. You can see a unifocal or a single mass. You can appreciate in the right hepatic lobe, which has replaced the right hepatic lobe. Now over here, this is the malignant hepatocyte. Now the first very important thing that I would like to highlight: look at the cell plate. Look at the thickness of the cell plate. Look at the thickness. It is more than three cell thick. Okay, so the thickness is very high. it is more than three cell thick so it is having one layer two layer three layer this is the fourth layer so you can see proliferating hepatocytes over here which is more than three cell thick okay there is a thickened hepato uh, hepatocyte trabeculi which is more than three cell layer thick this is the first important thing that you should see very importantly you can see certain glandular spaces okay these are glandular we call it as a false gland this is a pseudo asinal this is not a true gland it is actually representing dilated bile canalicula malformed dilated these are not the true gland these are malformed dilated bile canalicula so these are pseudo asinal arrangement okay and you can see all this is an, an, another say this is a basic trabeculi and you can see this is one layer two layer three layer for around five layer 1 2 3 4 5 so there is five layer thick you know cell plate is there so this is very important so there is distortion of the normal architecture number 1 You are having large pseudo asinar space number three, which is nothing but a dilated bile canalicula, and number three, you have thickened hepatocyte trabeculae. Okay. This is another diagram which is showing the precursor lesion, that is the pre-malignant changes. What is the large cell change? Can be seen. You can see all the cells are having a high NC ratio, and the nucleus. If you see, they are atypical. They are not looking like they have mild ATP or prominent nucleoli. Can be seen. Okay, very important. but normal you know so among normal size you can see certain uh, hepatocytes having a high nc ratio and mild atypicality is there this is the large cell chain so large hepatocytes with large often atypical nuclei with scattered among normal hepatocytes with round typical nucleus then we have a small cell change which is also a precursor lesion to hepatocellular carcinoma the abnormal cells are having high nc ratio and they are separated by thick plates okay so you will see that they are having thick plates so you can see over here more or less a normal hepatocyte but over here if you see the small cell change see the plates have become very thick and they are fusing with each other and they have more cytological atp as compared to the normal hepatocytes okay so over here is the normal if you see over here they the plates become more thick see they are joining and they are becoming more thick and they have more cytological atp as compared to the adjacent normal hepatocytes Now we were talking about the dysplastic nodule and high grade dysplastic nodule wherein there was a Mm, uh, nodule within a nodule appearance nodule and nodule growth over here so you can appreciate over here in this basic diagram this might be a dysplastic nodule and this small area is representing carcinoma in a high grade dysplastic nodule okay so basically this is classically a nodule within a nodule appearance okay so basically this is one other diagram wherein in the same diagram you are seeing two nodule this is also nodule in a nodule but over here this is one cancer within another cancer okay so basically over here in the center left we are having this is your moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma okay and on the other hand you can see a well differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma okay so this is also one other type of nodule within a nodule appearance wherein in a well differentiated variety you are having another nodule which is having a moderately differentiated variety so over here some other driver mutations were there so that had a growth advantage and they had you know further growth and more you know more faster growth as compared to the well defined variety of hepatocellular carcinoma okay now microscopically the well and moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinomas are composed of cells that resemble normal hepatocytes while poorly differentiated carcinomas will show marked cytological atypia 
द ट्यूमर सेल्स आर ग्रोइंग इन थिक प्लेट्स मोर देन थ्री सेल थिक और ट्रेबिकुले दे विल हैव सूडो ग्लैंडुलर स्ट्रक्चर विच आई ऑलरेडी शोन यू विद विच इज नथिंग बट माल फॉर्म डायलेटेड बाइलिकुलाई और दे माइट ग्रो इन शीट नाउ If we look at very important the different tumor markers for HCC, which is a very very important exam question. Number one, HEPAR one is most widely used marker and has a very high sensitivity around 80 to 90 percent for hepatocellular carcinoma. Then we have polyclonal carcinoma embryonic antigen, which is showing a canalicular pattern of staining in HCC. Then we are having CD10, which is also having a canalicular pattern similar to the polyclonal CE in HCC. Glycan 3 is an oncophytal antigen that is expressed in 70 to 80 percent of HCC. It has a high sensitivity than HEPAR 1 for poorly differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma. Arginus 1, a urea cycle, a urea cycle enzyme, has been recently described as a sensitive and a very specific marker for hepatocellular differentiation. Des gamma carboxy prothrombin, a protein induced by vitamin K abnormality, is again very important marker. AFP, though specific for HCC, but the sensitivity is low. and very importantly albumin in situ hybridization is quite specific for hepatocellular differentiation and also has a very high sensitivity so these are the important markers so in your exam you might get all of the following are markers for of hepatocytic differentiation or hepatocellular carcinoma except so these are the important markers hepar1 carcinoma embryonic antigen cd10 glycan3 arginase1 dcp afp and albumin in situ hybridization this is a very important exam question that you can be asked Coming to the clinical features of hepatocellular carcinoma, they are quite non-specific and include abdominal pain, malaise, fatigue, weight loss, and hepatomegaly. Elevated levels of serum alpha fetoprotein is again a frequent finding in advanced disease, but is not as sensitive as screening tests for early tumors and is not associated with the fibrolamellar variant. Remember, the fibrolamellar variant of hepatocellular carcinoma they do not express serum alpha protein. Now, CT and MRI uh, with contrast studies is highly characteristic. Now over here, there is a characteristic finding that you will see, and this is a surgery question. Early enhancement of the tumor due to contrast uptake in the arterial phase, followed by rapid venous washout, is the considered diagnostic for hepatocellular carcinoma diagnosis. Now liver transplantation is considered for HCC in the setting of advanced cirrhosis. Surgical resection is done and is a treatment of choice for tumors which are occurring in non-cirrhotic liver and in cirrhotic livers with adequate function. image guided tumor ablation with alcohol or radio frequency waves can be done for unresectable tumors hematogenous metastasis especially to the lung tends to occur late in the disease lymph node metastasis occurs in less than 5% of the cases overall outcome for hepatocellular carcinoma is poor because of the underlying liver disease and the intrinsic resistance of hcc to conventional chemotherapy now the overall five year survival rate is 30% for tumor confined to the liver and only 5 to 10% for cases with extra hepatic spread outcomes are better for unusual fibrolamellar variant with up to 40% of patients surviving 10 years or longer this is in large part because in absence of underlying liver disease extensive surgical resection is possible now we will discuss the last variant of hepatocellular carcinoma that is the fibrolamellar variant of the hcc now fibrolamellar hcc is one unusual histological type that occurs in young adolescents and adults around 20 to 40 years of age in absence of any pre existing liver disease so it occurs in non cirrhotic liver fibrolamellar hcc is strongly associated with a fusion gene that is leading to aberrant activity of protein kinase a serum afp levels in this variety of hcc is normal now very important just like in fnh that is focal nodular hyperplasia which is a non neoplastic lesion just like that we also see a central scar in fibrolamellar hcc in the ct mri but remember they do not show any enhancement whereas uh, central scar in fnh will show enhancement looking at the gross features fibrolamellar um, uh, fibrolamellar hcc is firm white it is well circumscribed but unencapsulated lobulated mass arising in the background of a normal liver most tumors they are large and uh, usually frequent involvement of the left lobe has been noted a prominent central stellate scar similar to fnh can be present okay so let me show you the gross image over here the tumor is quite large as you can appreciate okay they are well circumscribed but they are not encapsulated and they are having lobulated borders over here okay they have well demarcated nodules this is a resected specimen of fibrolamellar carcinoma see in the center also you are having some small kind of a scar over here you can see in this particular diagram microscopically there are three important features that you have to see there is a triad of large polygonal cells with granular cytoplasm that is oncocytic cytoplasm due to the presence of abundant mitochondria this is number one microscopic feature number two they have vesicular nucleus with prominent nucleoli and they have parallel lamellae of dense collagen bundles so i will show you all the three features over here 
So this over here, what is this? This is the number, the collagen bundles that we see. These uh, hepatocytes that you see, they are having increased amount of eosinophilic cytoplasm. That is the oncocytic, oncocytic cytoplasm. Okay, is there? And very importantly, if you see, they have prominent nucleoli. They have prominent nucleoli. This is the classical triad that you will see. Okay, nest and cords of malignant appearing oncocytic hepatocyte number one. Separated by dense uh, abundant collagen number two and number three is the presence of uh, your uh, uh, is num number three is presence of prominent vesicular nuclear. These are three important microscopic features of fibrolamellar HCC. Immunostic MXC FLM will resemble classic HCC and will express HEPAR1, CEA, glypican 3 But AFB, AFP, alpha fetoprotein is absent and did are not expressed over here. CK7 is expressed in all of the fibrolamellar HCC compared with 10 to 30 percent of classic HCC. So, this is very important. And CK7 and CD68 has been advocated for FLM as both are positive in nearly all the cases. Now, very important uh, molecular abnormality that has been discovered now is deletion of 400 kilo base pairs in chromosome 19 that leads to a novel DNA JB1 PRK ACA fusion transcript. This transcript and this translocation can be identified by the RT-PCR as well as by the FISH studies and this deletion has been reported in more than 80% of the fibrolamellar variety of, of ACC so it is very important for diagnosis and most important thing this variety is having a better prognosis as compared to the classic variety of hepatocellular carcinoma. So, with this we have discussed the most important variety that is asked in the exam. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture thoroughly. Uh, so, thank you very much for watching this particular video.